I'm coming out with a little invention that I, I created over the summer. It's, uh, I'm calling it the Fairview Finder. And what this does for plein air painting or for any, any kind of painting, it allows me to, to quickly pop open a, a window and see within uh, a matter of seconds the composition within this format. Uh, right in here, it's, it's a 16 by 24 format. I have little tick marks that tell me where the uh, golden ratio is within this scene. I also have um, composition types from Edgar Payne's uh, book, uh, Composition for Outdoor Painting, along the sides here, and then a value scale. So this is in production right now. Um, if you're going like a different format, you could open those up. If you're going with a, with a square format, you can open up the square format. and and instantly see, you know, where where the composition is. As we struggle so much. What did you call it again? This is a fair view finder. <laughs> if you follow me on Facebook, I'll I'll advertise it pretty well on Facebook. I did a when I did the mock up, this is a just a mock up right now. Um, over the summer, I took it out in my backyard. I took pictures of me with the scene that I was going to paint. I took it to also Paris with me. This thing works worked great for me to quickly see a good composition in there because we and and it blacks out um, everything else, all the noise around it. Just allows me to hone in on that. So for this, I'm going to use this to see uh, from the photograph where a good composition is. And this whole thing is a good composition anyway. I got a, the center of it, my center of interest, good leading lines coming down to this waterfall. Here, <laughs> coming down to this waterfall. And um, so all the action and attention is, is really coming down to there. Uh, I've got a good limited palette uh, that is easy to work with. If you're struggling with color and color harmony, try limiting your palette uh, to like three colors, four colors at the max. Um, it, it just kind of simplifies everything. So now, now that I have the, the center of interest, I'm going to put this here and get my my golden ratio area right here on the paper so i'm i'm holding this up closing one eye and then aligning aligning this these tick marks on the lower right hand corner to that spot um, let me quickly sketch this out One tip, tip that um, I'm giving you guys, for if you want to do plein air competitions, um, one tip is to, and I shouldn't give this to you because I'm going to run out of <laughs> supply, is to go into Goodwill uh, and in their frame sections. You'll see great frames. So I bought this at Goodwill. There was a, a print in this, um, 14, 15 bucks. Wow. Glass, mat, frame. Uh, look for the wooden frames. Yeah. Uh, avoid those plastic. Uh, yeah. and, and you'll feel it, the weight of, of the frame. If it's heavy, typically that's going to be wooden. If it's light, it's going to be that plastic foam garbage that, that that they're making, um, but for fourteen bucks, you can you can get that mat, put it on your paper, frame it out, and and uh, for plein air painting, especially uh, in competition, you want that frame, that mat, the glass, 
um, if you're going with glass, um, ready to go. Whereas Dave here, he doesn't use glass anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Irving is rolling over in his grave. <laughs> Dave and I were in the same watercolor class together. Um, back in 80, 80 to 81, we had some good, good folks there. Um, did you ever get Larry out here? No, I haven't. You should, you should get him out here. Larry, Larry Paulson was, was the golden boy of, of the class. Who was the wild child of the class? Pardon me? Who was the wild child? Oh. That must have been David. <laughs> But we had about 30, 35 people in that class. Um, yeah. I have a, a video. I don't know if you have his. Uh, Irving Shapiro did a, 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 a demo of negative painting with the, uh, for Channel 11, I think it was, uh, PBS. It's about 30, 45 minutes. I don't know if you have that, but it's, it's, it's so, I'll send you a, a link to it. Um, would it be in PBS archives? It might be. Is it on like YouTube or something? No, it's, I had the, the video or a CD, a DVD of it. And then I held my, and I recorded the TV and, you know, totally illegal but <laughs> so I have it on, on digital on my on my computer oh, that I could that. I could Dropbox it to you I'd love to do that. yeah but it all comes back <laughs> when, <laughs> when you're seeing him talk and and uh, oh my goodness okay so there's my center of interest my area of focus uh, did you all get the handout I gave you a little handout right there, pass those out. These are my three pillars for, for captivating for a captivating painting. So these three things are in the back of my head. Design, freshness, and story. Uh, as as I'm a, when I'm a judge at, a, at an event, these three things are in the back of my head when I'm judging each piece of, of a painting. What's the design? What's the overall design of this painting? Is it working as a whole? Um, and then within those that design, are the values working? Are the values carrying the, the painting? Or is it forced uh, or confusing? And contrast, especially in watercolor, you'll see, um, you'll see in art, if the painter is is trying to copy reality versus um, interpret the, the, the image or the photograph or the scene and and create a piece of art that is a standalone piece that is is a gorgeous story um, and within that there's a story that's being told that you really want to capture um, and by figuring out that story, uh, ask yourself why five times. Why is this scene captivating to me? Well, I love the woods. I love the deep woods. I love the solitude of, of this. Um, well, why do you love that? Well, I love the, <laughs> I love the, you know, the vertical elements of the trees, the, the way the, the landscape speaks to me and then the movement of that water well, why is that and then you keep going asking why five times to get to that root cause of why you want to paint this painting to begin with what's the intent rather than just copying a scene just because you can copy it uh, you're going to get much more uh, passion out of this these are uh, six little thumbnails that here, this is kind of related to the values down in here. And 
I'm going to use uh, these motifs. It's the same design. It's a steel yard design. But I'm going to use um, probably this one here in the lower right as my motif for this painting. You'll see uh, some good renowned, world renowned watercolorists using this technique. Um, Thomas Schaller is one of them. Most of his paintings are, are following this, this motif down here, this lower right, where you've got the, the middle value occupying the background shapes. You've got the middle ground in the light shapes, and then you, the foreground shapes are the darker shapes. And it provides a really simplified value plan for the, the overall design of this painting. So this scene kind of is painting itself already, where you've got the background shape is the middle value. You've got the high contrast occupying the, of the light and the dark occupying the middle ground. And then the darker grounds are going to be the trees in the foreground. So breaking down your scenes into one of these six motifs is, is going to give you such a jump start on simplifying the plan. Okay, so let's get going. I don't want to cover that up. Thanks for all the, the treats. These are great. I've been addicted to grapes lately. <laughs> if you ever go to Costco, if you're a Costco member, they've got the, the best grapes. <laughs> Let me scoop this over so you can see the palette. I'm going to kill this this uh, lavender, this purple, with a little yellow ochre. So know your complementary colors, you know, purple and yellow. If you if you don't want this this strong of a purple, kill it with a little um, yellow ochre. I'm working on Shizen paper. If you haven't played with Shizen, it is a beautiful paper to play with. How do you spell that? It's on the handout. S H I Z E N. Cheap Joe's has a pack of 20 full sheets for about um, 110 bucks or something like that. Feels and looks expensive, but is not. As I'm coming down, I'm going to blue this up a little bit. You'll love it if you if you like um, the granulation. My light source is coming this way, illuminating this whole snowbank over on this side here. I'm going to go in and paint the shadow sh shapes of the snow, tapping into a little cobalt blue. Uh oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know it's working. Yeah. 
paintbrush are you using right now? This is a hack brush. H A K E. Hack. Some, uh, how do you say it? Hacky, maybe? Hacky. Hake. Hake. There's three different ways of saying it. Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> Switching now over to the one inch flat. This was the Shapiro brush. Shapiro brush. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is the, the very one I had. Grum, Grumbacher. Yeah. I think I still have my Marilla. I think a Marilla was a one. Was it? So my shapes are getting smaller and smaller as they go back and back uh, further and further. So I'm using linear perspective to drop clues as to how far this is going back. Uh, and then at the very beginning of this scene right in here, I'm going to warm this up with some cordaconum gold. Some transparent red oxide. Um, I kind of gave up on the on the burnt sienna. Why? It's 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 too opaque. It's too. Uh, try the transparent red oxide. The it's uh, again Irving Shapiro's rolling in his grave right now. <laughs> Do you use black or white ever? No, I don't use black. Uh, I do use white. I have what, some white right here. What brand was that? Uh, transparent red oxide? Uh, Daniel Smith. Share the love. I love the using the, this warmth as a uh, as a target spot for my my center of interest. So where where you have small shapes occupying you know high contrast areas is typically a good way of designating this area as your center of interest. The softer, brushy-like um, shapes are uh, kind of a good foil for those. I'm going to hit this with some dark in the background here. While this is still damp, you get some nice soft foliage back in here.
still in that light. Oh, yeah. That's good. Humidity in here is really nice. It's, it's drying nicely. There's so many warm bodies in here. <laughs> you go out plain air painting and, and um, pay attention to the humidity of the, of the day. Uh, sometimes you'll, that will determine how fast you want to paint, how fast you need to paint mm -hmm. to get those washes in. Uh, I know there was a, a rainy day on, on uh, in the last Cedarburg event. Dave was out there painting under his trunk of his car. <laughs> rain was pouring. So anytime you get that rain, your, your washes are going to take forever to dry. Um, so you have to adjust. So you can adjust how fast you need to paint and you know allow those washes to dry i think you took the painting in uh, into your car to actually yeah. <laughs> turn the turn the uh heater or the yeah it will not dry because it's raining so i'm happy with with the way it's working right now um and then a good technique is to not do anything at this point allow it to just Settle in. Um, I say to my students, half of watercolor painting is putting that paint down, and the other half is not doing anything after that. Um, Can you put the rest of those so I can see how it's doing up here for Leslie? Thank you, Do you want to take a break there, Steve? Yeah, that would be a good time to break. Yeah, this is coming out in, uh, I, I'm going to get the prototype, the final prototype of this, um, probably tomorrow or early next week. Um, and if it's a go, they said before Christmas they can have a thousand made. So there'll be uh, about $35. Oh. You just, I, I have a website that's made, it's not populated yet. Um, fairviewfinder.com is, is going to be the, uh, the website. But if you follow me on Facebook or friend me on Facebook, I'll, I'll give, or Instagram or TikTok, there's going to be a lot of uh, things. And then the website, will you could purchase it, and then I'll ship it from my home with a little pay, couple pages of instructions. and uh, I'll put it on the, um, Facebook, on the Facebook page. Yeah. Also of, of the club. Okay, well, let's get going. <laughs> How much time do I have? Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. Almost an hour. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We'll be done. One hour. Any questions so far? So what were your three main colors you said your limited palette? This is uh, this is um, Dachshund Purple, Deep Purple Dachshund by Michael Harding. Michael Harding um, is n normally known for oil paints out of England. He just came out with um, watercolor in the spring at the Oil Painters of America conference and. Um, I bought a bunch, uh, but mostly Daniel Smith. This transparent red oxide is incredible. Throw away your burnt siennas. Get this one. Uh, you'll thank me later. If you like granulation, uh, if you haven't used Daniel Smith's, um, no, the yeah the the the. the uh, Permatex design. Here's a big P, but um, 
There's one that's called um, definitely black. Hematite genuine. Hematite is is a uh, semi-precious gem that is. Uh, this is like painting with pure dirt. <laughs> <laughs> But on the Shizen, because of the, the roughness of this paper, um, this thing works incredibly well. If you like granulation. If you don't like granulation, then stick to the hot press. And but I'm going to incorporate some of this hematite into the trees. For this is um, I call it a gray goose. It's not the gray goose. It's uh, <laughs> Scroggy's loose goose. <laughs> Grey goose is the vodka. <laughs> that may work too. Again, Cheap Joe's, not to plug Cheap Joe's, but um, he's got a set of these three. This is the finest one. Uh, but it's a, it's a really nice dagger um, brush that... Um, if you're into trees, and you'll see me do this kind of stop, start, stop, start. It's a it's a really nice um, motion to have when you're when you're creating little hubs, knobs, or knuckles for branches. Then you come off off of that with further branches. This is a Scroggy's Loose Goose. Not the Grey Goose. Are you starting and stopping or are you changing the pressure or both? Both. It's the, it's the motion and then the up and down aspect of it. I also love mops too. Mops are... And I love when trees kind of lean in like this. I don't know what he uses. But just get yourself a scrap piece of paper and, and just <laughs> and just play with the play with these brushes. They're uh, I sprayed it just to just to kind of mute the the edges down a little bit. Give me a little furry furry branches way back there. Let's get some pure hematite going here. Yes. Wow. Just a minute, though. Use a rigger and a smaller painting, or 
use it. No, I'll use this one. Yeah. I've got little tiny guys, little liners. Um, but I prefer this one. It's got more spring. Yeah, Scroggy's Loose Goose. Get the whole set. Oh, the whole set. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a set of three. <laughs> Is it 32? Yeah. The best 32 bucks you'll buy. Yeah. Get the um, get the Shai Zen paper while you're there too. <laughs> he recently passed, didn't he? Yeah. So did Jack Richardson. So oh, did he? Next, so now I'm thinking: Is there a thick flick, or is there a? Uh, oh. Jerry's, Jerry's artorama, so I would be really worried now about <laughs> yeah. that. Oh, now I feel bad. I um, I won an award for my land, one of my landscape paintings with the OPA uh, this last fall, and I was supposed to get a, a five hundred dollar worth of material from Richardson. And I never got it, and, then th and so I emailed him, and then uh, I didn't know he passed. Um, I'm wondering if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> now I have guilt. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't running the business anymore anyway, so... Oh, he wasn't? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Same thing with Joe, I think. He, had, he was getting into a dementia, not to get... Oh. He was so good class. Chief Joe? Chief Joe, yeah. Uh, he, didn't, he wasn't in the business anymore. He was. Oh, uh, sure. Because then there. His son, his daughter. What is the darkest dark you have there for your trees? Is that a combination of birds and fire uh, this is a combination of the purple that I had on my palette with the hematite. Just those two? Yes. Yeah. Now, if you look here, I have, as Bob Ross would say, happy accidents. Just, you don't want to cover those up. You want to work with those. It's just a, a nice bloom that's happening from water draining down into this wash, and it's creating these um, these incredible things that you you haven't planned for, but you can work with now. They're little little gifts. So my darkest dark is going to be a warm dark. right next to my lightest light, which is that water. Let's soften up some of those edges. Brush <laughs> Scroggy? Scroggy is S-C-R O-O No, S-C-R-O G-G-Y apostrophe S So look for these highlights. See the highlights that were left? Those are my kind of like the snow pile. And then under that snow pile is going to be a shadow shape 
and then under that shadow shape is the rock shape. So you got highlight, midtone, dark, highlight, midtone, dark, highlight, midtone, dark. So you you you're kind of playing with these these shapes. Here's the highlight, midtone, and then right under that is going to be a dark kind of rock coming out. Got to warm these up. Great sound. It's just shape making. Did you ever take a break from it and, and then come back? And you'll feel that the life you lived in between those added to the value that you now add to your paintings. It's, it's an incredible feeling. So you could you could take a year off and but don't don't be lazy. You know, always create whether you're you're driving down the street, you know, you're stopped at a stoplight, now you're looking for shapes to paint. You know, spend time in, you know, actively creating in your brain. Your brain doesn't know the difference between physically painting and mentally painting. So So when you're making shapes, you're, I, what's in my head right now is continents and islands. Like continents and islands. So you're you're creating organic shapes, and the best design in the world is the world itself. Look at the, a map of the world. You've got these big continents and little islands coming out. Have big continents and little islands coming out. It's it's a great way to kind of organically create shapes in nature. The minute you add, and I'll do this over here, the minute you add consistent, even shapes, that's my humanness coming out. That's, that's not a good thing. That's your left brain. <laughs> yeah. We all like order and, and organization. Now use now that you know that, now use it to your advantage if you have a center of interest that has an architectural element in it. I was an architectural illustrator for you know twenty years. Um, so I know how to paint architecture, but I I shy away from it because I've done it so for so long. Now I, I love landscapes and nature. That but if you the minute you add a human element out here, uh, like a house or a shed or, or a home, that's that's one of those eye magnets that's just going to suck the attention in because that's that's evidence of a human activity out there. Likewise, a, a, a an animal or. Uh, a human walking in the woods 
it's going to give you, you know, we're designed to see those those living things or evidence of living things, the order and the architecture. Um, so that becomes your focus of interest. That's going to be your focal, focal yeah. point. Yeah. So if your focal point is here, but you have a house over here, now you're, now you have, you split the center of interest and you're going to go ping ponging back and forth. So kind of keep your focal point, your, your architecture elements in, in near your center of interest. It, let me try. <laughs> I thought you were softening things. I thought, yeah. yeah, I softened up here. Let's soften up here. Yeah, you could soften. Um, yeah. kind of cool so you can get you can get um, helps to have it wet I'm gonna open this up value change or temperature change in this. Get some rocks in the bottom here. Oh. Sorry, Tim. Let's get a little, little waterfall happening here. <laughs> well, yeah, I have a waterfall over <laughs> on my phone. I was talking to folks earlier um, during break. If you haven't seen my photo references, um, I'd say 80% of them. 20% of them are real photographs that I took online or, or found online or took in the, in the woods. And then 80% of them are actually um, AI generated images that um, you, know, you get a lot, you hear a lot of negative stuff about AI, but the, uh, the fact is it's, it's very similar. I'm using it as, as a tool like Photoshop to bring in um, kind of seed images that I can then 
use that to generate other other reference material to paint from. Um, How do you find the AI images? If you want to look just for AI images, you'll find them. Just just Google it or, or you know. Um, I'm using a tool that helps me generate an AI image that then I can use as a, as a photo reference to paint from. It's like a, I'm using it as a filter in Photoshop. You know how you could, if you've ever played with Photoshop, you can apply a filter to an image and get a totally different image. Um, same thing. Um, it's, it's called Wonder. It's about 30 bucks, $35 to get. Next to your Scroggy's Loose Goose and my, and my Fairview Finder, it's, it's the best $35. <laughs> but what it does is it, and, and, I'll, and I'll demonstrate this while, while I'm waiting for this to dry. Um, so let's say I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, okay? But I want some additional ideas. So I took a photograph of this, and I'm going to bring it into Wonder. So this is this is the my painting coming in here. So I'm just selecting a cropped area, two by three. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a style, a pen and ink style. Give me two options. My prompt is winter, um, snow, woodland scene. And in, in a matter of a few seconds, you get two options. So that's that's one of them, and there here they they saw a little bridge over here, so they added a bridge. So you know, you could add another architectural element that that would bring in, but it's it's like really cool stuff. Is that like little robots that are doing that? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to have any background. Uh, no, not for, not for this. But it's it's it looks like a little potato chip. The uh, that's the that's the app right there. This like flipped video. <laughs> it's weird. It's not flipped. That's what it is. Anyway, um, play with wonder. Um, Again, you'll hear a lot of negative stuff for, from artists about using AI to generate art that then they sell as you know as real art. But I'm using it as um, an image generation tool to help me generate images that I can paint from. I'm learning things that I could, you know. Than, than paint, um, but I also love photo photography and photos, my own photographs. Um, I also uh, love finding and, and seeing different textures. So here's a, here's a really nice swirly pattern right here. So you're you're seeing once you once you're in this, you're seeing textures and patterns all over the place. So let me take that and bring that into Wonder. So let's say let's say I love the gradient dark to light up in here. I'll use a square 
uh, format using the same Winter Wonderland prompt. So yeah, down here they have scrolling tips and tricks to use. So here, what I found was was a, a circular pattern in, in the in the in the stucco of the, <laughs> and it created for me a nice circular composition type. Okay, that I could then take this and make a painting out of. Here's another one. So you're seeing, I'm seeing art everywhere. You know. <laughs> In, in, in the textures of your shirts and the, in the carpeting. Um, oh my goodness, you can, you can go on and on. And to combine that with Photoshop or uh, Photoshop Express where you can layer one photo on top of another and with blending options, the, uh, you're gonna, your mind gets blown. Okay, I'm, I'm assessing where I need to um, quiet things down, where I need to add some some darks to really let this this area shine. I'm gonna darken in some some shapes over here. I don't like this this white thing leading right off. Do some wet on wet, wet on moist. You're doing a vignette, right? Because you got that frame all set. Yeah. Drop in color where, wherever you think you might want to try different things. Soften in some things. Notice I'm using my, my photo reference less and less because um, now it's mostly about what's, what's keeping me in, in, the, in this image. Um, kind of acting as a, I want kind of dark around the, the edges here. Uh, let me come up and, and create a nice palm tree, or not palm tree, uh, <laughs> pine tree. This is um, 
Jadeite. Daniel Smith makes, uh, it's a Permatech color. They actually crush jade and uh, give you a nice deep green, cool green pigment on this. As these trees come down lower, they warm up typically at the base. You'll get a lot of dead branches down in here. Twenty minutes yet? Yes, twenty more. I'm thinking I'll, uh, I want some more edges on this these snowbanks. This is cobalt blue. Kind of coming in like that. Deepening the color of this water, the closer it gets to us. The um, and this you get from just plain air painting and just increasing your level of observation skills. What's happening physically is the, um, the light is, you're seeing directly into the water, the deeper blue, and that surface of that water is picking up the, um, the bluer sky that's up over your head versus the angle of incident of that water out here is shallower. So you're seeing kind of a less of a bounce. So you're picking up the same color as the sky out here. Whereas down here, you're, you're, the angle of an incident is, is much more steeper. So you're looking down and that reflection is going up into the deeper blue sky above you. 
You see that on grass often or in, um, in um, wet beaches. Um, you'll see the, the wetness of the, of the sand down in here in the foreground is going to be this real deep uh, brown, almost purple, because the blue of the sky is, is coming down and, and hitting your eyeball. Versus out there, it's it's lighter. It's it's uh, taking on the the color of the um, it could be the sunset even. Get something dark down in here. I don't want to use white. Let's see how this works without white. Uh, I'm going to try some new gamboge. I've got kind of fall leaves happening up in here. Let's see how this works. Oh, I like it. <laughs> that would be bad if <laughs> oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, knowing your design, I, I often tell my students, if you have $100 to spend to learn how to improve your painting, spend $80 of that $100 in learning design. All the elements and principles of design, there's dozens of them. Um, one element of design is line and You'll see line in, in, in the, the way I painted these leaves. I have continuous lines for the tree trunks, and I have a discontinuous line bringing the eye back down, pointing me or bringing me back down to my center of interest or my hero of the story. So I have continuous lines and discontinuous lines. Use both in your painting. Um, but that brings us back to, if you, if you don't know anything about lines or design or, you know, start now. Start learning your elements of design and your, and your principles of design. Uh, it's, they're so important. Then I tell them, spend $10 on all your other art supplies, <laughs> everything, everything, <laughs> as expensive as that is, that ten dollars is buy the best you can, and then spend the other ten on buying art that moves you, and understand why it moves you is so important. You know, keep asking yourself. What is it about that piece of painting or that art hanging on that wall in that gallery or in that museum? What is it about that painting that's moving me to almost tears? Because the more you understand you yourself, you're going to, you're going to make art that pleases you then. And that art is just going to grow and grow and grow in scale. So, um, and understand why it moves you. I, for me personally, I love connections. I love the negative painting of watercolor or oil painting that provides a unification of the whole painting, but then there's negative spaces or negative shapes that the artist made that connect the whole painting together. When that happens, it's, it's like pure magic to me. Don't forget the 30 bucks on the viewfinder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 35.99. <laughs> I got to owe this gentleman a dollar. <laughs> Is he going to have the design elements on the side? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, um, it's a good $35 spent. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the uh, composition types that Edgar Payne worked so hard on. 
Edgar Payne is a, a landscape painter. He was actually a member of the Palette and Chisel um, before he went out to California and made his millions. Around the around the um, 1920s, 1930s, I think he, he, he lived. But he wrote a phenomenal book on composition for outdoor painting. That you can use if you're not an outdoor painter, you can use the wisdom that he he wrote in that book um, to your advantage if you're even a studio painter. I'm going to use some lavender paint. Lavender is a beautiful color. I like Holbein's for some reason. I buy Holbein's. You get stuck on these brands and you just can't shake it. It is opaque. There's white in this in this lavender. Again, discontinuous lines, kind of dry brush. I think that's it. I think I'll uh, end it there. Yeah. <laughs> signing the painting. I like signing. Um, not always on the right hand side. Where wherever the um, the center of interest, if it's leaning to the to the right, I'll sign on onto the left. I don't know why I do that. Now let me get the mat. See how this all works out. My fifteen dollar mat from Goodwill. And I love I love for some reason I love rescuing frames. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. You love that? Yeah, he said. Thank you.